Hello folks, this is Sula once again. I'm going to be showing you a video from the recent Final Fantasy V 4-Job Fiesta playthrough that I did. This is going to be a battle against the final boss. This is a battle that I tried to do on livestream. Some people have been following along on livestream. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do the final battle on livestream because the boss ended up wiping me out. This is a successful version of the final battle. So let me spend the first couple minutes here, because this is going to be a fairly extended battle sequence. Let me spend the first couple of minutes or so talking about the background to the Four Job Fiesta. The Final Fantasy V Four Job Fiesta is a charity event that goes on every summer. Uh, basically, you can sign up and you will be randomly assigned four jobs. Final Fa from the game Final Fantasy V, of course. Final Fantasy V is an old-fashioned NES game, or not NES, uh, SNES game, I should say. And there are 18 different job classes in this game, and when you sign up for the four job fiesta, you will get randomly assigned four jobs, and then you have to play through the game using those four jobs. Since I enjoy this game, this is one of my favorite games, and I've done a lot with it on my website over the years, I decided that this summer I would go ahead and sign up. And the jobs that I ended up getting are the four that you see here. I ended up getting the Black Mage, the Knight, and two Red Mages for my job set up here. Uh, I was doing two particular variants or restrictions for this particular setup. I was running the natural setup, which means that you can't change job classes. Whatever you get, you have to stick with. So in other words, I can't have characters spend some time as a Knight and some time as a Black Mage. They each just have to stick whatever their job is. And then number two, the other restriction was classic, which means the only jobs that I would get randomly were jobs from the original Final Fantasy game. So that would be the knight or fighter in the original Final Fantasy. The, uh, what else, the black belt, the uh, thief, the red mage, the white mage, and the black mage. So I ended up drawing knight, black mage, and two red mages. And I uh, did a playthrough with this. So if you're interested in watching some of the gameplay for this particular run, I will put in the link to uh, put in the link to my uh, what is it to my t Twitch live stream and all of the runs are saved there. I will also have this information on my website. It probably will not be up the exact instant that this video goes up, but uh, over this weekend I will put that together on my website, and my website will have links to all of the live stream runs if you want to watch the full playthrough. In total, I ended up having five game overs on this run, and I actually put them up here on the YouTube channel, what the earlier game overs were. Two against Red Dragons, Red Dragons that came out of trapped treasure chests, and really probably shouldn't have died in one of those two battles, but screwed up one of them, and the other one was a back attack that was kind of unlucky. A third game over against a very difficult encounter against Triple Blue Dragons in x -Death's Castle. And then two game overs against this boss, the Neo uh, the uh, Neo X Death fight, and the last boss in the game. Uh, first game over happened when I didn't take the Almagest attack seriously enough at the end of the fight, which we'll see in a little bit. And the second one came when uh, I got a terrible Grand Cross roll. Just a terrible, terrible Grand Cross roll. But more about that in a minute. So let me talk about this actual battle, shall we? This is the last battle in the game. There are two parts to it. The first is what we commonly call the tree form of x -Death. That's what I've been fighting here right now. This is a fairly straightforward battle. I had some bad RNG luck in this particular battle, actually. The most dangerous thing that this boss can do is use an attack called White Hole, and you've seen him using that a couple times. That both kills the person who gets hit by it and uh, petrifies them, turns them to stone. And you actually have to cure both status ailments when you when you get hit by White Hole. It's also an instant death attack for solo characters, which and it commonly wipes out lots and lots of my solo characters. For in a full party, it is not nearly as bad. This tree part has 49,000 HP, 49k, and you have seen me just kind of battering away here. One of the big things I want to do is I want to keep the party in armor status at all times. Armor status reduces all physical damage by 50%, so it's very, very useful. And that's about the most useful thing that the red mages can do, is they can heal and they can keep the party in armor status. So anyway, this is the end of the first half of the battle, and the second half of the battle will get much more serious. It's a much, much longer and much more involved fight than uh, what you're seeing here right now. So anyway, the second part of the battle will be coming up, and let me talk a little bit about the second form of x -Death. By the way, it gets really loud here when the forms are transitioning. I will try to turn that down when I do the editing on this video, but it's always really, really loud background music. 
So Neo X Death is the second half of this fight. Neo X Death is quite an interesting battle in this game. There are four parts to Neo X Death that you have to hit. There are actually six parts, but two of them are untargetable and have no health. That's just a mess with uh, multi-targeted abilities like Meteo and X-Fight in this game. But anyway, so there's really, technically there's six parts, but in, for all intents and purposes, it's really four parts to this fight. Each one of the parts has over 50,000 hit points. Uh, they range from one has 50k, two have 55k, and one has 60k. So I believe it adds up to 220,000 HP. And that's one reason why multi-targeting spells are often quite good against this boss. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate part number four right off the bat. Uh, part number four is vulnerable to the magic lamp. So watch right here, magic lamp. Double click this, it summons Odin from the magic lamp, and that will instantly kill part number four. Why make this battle harder than it has to be, basically? This is already a tough battle, so we just take out part number four, and now we have three parts left to go. I'm going to focus on part number two. That's the part you see down at the bottom of the screen there. The part that's like by that uh, demonic head type thing down at the bottom. This part has 55,000 health, and this part does exactly one thing. It casts a spell called Almagest. Just cast a spell called Almagest, and it will do that every now and then. Now, normally, Almagest isn't that bad. It is a uh, magic damage spell, and it deals uh, magic damage to everyone. The problem is, my party has very low health, uh, because I have all casting jobs. Right here, you're going to see me use a little trick with Kara. I'm going to use something called the Wonder Rod, and that's going to get me one casting of the spell Shell. One casting only. And what Shell does is it reduces damage from magic spells by 50%. What this will do is it will allow Ferris to survive a casting of Almagest. She will not be able to survive a casting of Almagest otherwise. See, Almagest does about 1500 damage to everyone in your party. And that's a problem because if you look at those health totals, Bart's, Kara, and Ferris all have less than 1500 health, so they will all die instantly to one casting of Almagest. Lena has just enough health to survive a casting of Almagest, so I will use the Wonder Rod for a one-time casting of Shell, and that will keep Ferris alive through Almagest, but only if she has full health. So, Ferris needs to be at full health to survive a casting of that spell. And right here, you're going to see me just making certain that I can survive that by keeping uh, Ferris at full health here. How do I know that Almagest is going to happen soon? The boss starts shaking. That's your signal that it's going to cast Almagest uh, upcoming very soon. Kara is totally dead. She will die to Almagest. I'm just waiting. There it is. There's the casting of Almagest. Oh no, that's a lot of damage. And yeah, that's why I need to take out the Almagest part first. Uh, so what we're going to see here is Ferris. I got really lucky there that that attack hit Ferris and did not hit Lena. That would have killed Lena and that would have made this part of the battle much more difficult. So Lena will use an elixir, restore all her hit points, because it would take forever to cure her back up to full. And I'm going to have Ferris, as the Red Mage, take advantage of the Red Mage's special ability, which is X Magic, and get a double casting of life on Bart's and Kara. And fortunately, we are all wearing running shoes, so we all have haste status. And I'm going to have Ferris restore her health back up to full. It's very important to keep Ferris alive, because if she dies, she loses her shell status, and I cannot get that back again. The Wonder Rod is a one-time use of that skill. I cannot get it again. I've also lost armor status on both... Uh, I've also lost armor status on Kara and Bart's here, because they died, so I'll have to replenish that. Kara is going to double cure... or uh, Ferris will double cure to Kara, and Bart's is just going to elixir himself back to full health. And Lena will keep attacking for right now. In this, in this battle, pretty much all of the offense comes from Bart's and Lena. Uh, Bart's is named Fiesta, but that's because this was for the four-job Fiesta run. Right here is Grand Cross. This is a status ailment. It inflicts any one of 18 status ailments randomly. And if you look at what I rolled here, I rolled nothing on Lena, Condemned status on Ferris, and the Condemned status is bad, and an antidote on... Uh, an antidote on... No, excuse me, poison status on Kara. So which I'm going to cure with an antidote. Uh, Bart has actually been turned into a zombie, so I'm going to fix that by using an item. It actually took me a minute to figure out what had been done to him. But yeah, he's been turned into a zombie, so I restored armor status, then brought him back to life. And now I can get Bart's back into the action again. But uh, Condemned status is bad. That puts a ticking death clock over the top of Ferris's head. When that counts down to zero, Ferris will die, and there's not really anything I can do to stop that. Um, once that happens, Ferris will lose her shell status, 
and Ferris will get one-shotted by Almagest again. So I'm trying to kill the Almagest part as quickly as possible before uh, before it can get off too many of those Almagests, because every single one represents dire peril for this group. So the Red Mages basically are the heal and support characters. They're keeping everyone in armor status. They're casting Cure 2 repeatedly. It's basically like having a poor man's version of the White Mage. I really wish I had had a White Mage because that would have made this immensely easier. White Mages have all sorts of amazing status buffing abilities. They get Shell status. They get access to Cure 3. Cure 3 is much, much, much stronger than these uh, really weak little Cure 2s that I have to keep using. But Cure 2 is what I've got, so it's what I'll use here. I can double cast Cure 2, and that's, as I said, a poor man's version of Cure 3. And of course, White Mages can also cast Holy at the end of the game. They can use Dispel, they can use the Heal or Asuna spell, depending on your translation. Anyway, Red Mages are very weak in the end game, but that's what I've got, so that's what I'm going to use. And the offense comes from the Knight and the Black Mage. Why am I using an elixir here on full health? The elixir is because uh, Kara is almost out of magic points and the elixir is to restore magic points. I actually had to do the same thing with Ferris earlier, uh, at an earlier point in this battle. So, what are some of the problems of this particular party? Well, this party has decent sources of both physical and magic damage. We've got the knight for physical damage, we've got the black mage for uh, magic damage, and together that can get us past most problems. The biggest issue is the lowest, the low health on this party. Uh, everybody has very, very low health. That's because mage classes inherently don't have a lot. And right there, I'm just waiting for Almagest, and Almagest hits again. I have Ferris sitting there ready to immediately cast double life on Bartz and Lena. And Lena also has her action bar filled to immediately reuse an elixir on herself. This was a much better Almagest than the first one. I was much better prepared. I actually did not prepare for that first Almagest very well. And right there, Lena uses the Knight Innate Guard ability. Uh, well, not Guard. Actually, it's actually not Guard. It's Cover. Um, so Lena automatically covers people that are very low on health. Here I'm thinking about what to do. And what I ultimately decided to do was that I would go ahead and put Armor Status back on Lena. And then cure Lena as well. Uh, why am I thinking about this? Because I'm going to use an elixir, I believe, on one of the characters here. I think Bartz gets an elixir used on him, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, right there, you see. So I use the elixir on Bartz, and Ferris can fortunately survive that attack. But Ferris is about to die anyway, so I'm not going to bother healing Ferris, because if you notice the Condemned ticking death clock, she's about to die in three seconds anyway. And right there, we got the kill on the Almagest part, so no more Almagest, thank goodness. I actually didn't realize this at first. I was wondering why Lena had attacked the the part um, the part up at the head of this boss, as opposed to the part down at the bottom. So anyway, that's restoring armor status on Bartz and then getting a cure two on Kara. Ferris will die here, but fortunately now I don't need shell status because um, I've already killed the Almagest part. But I'll just bring her back to life and get her back in the fight. Now, now that we've got that part out of the way, there are two parts left on this boss. Part number one, which is the part in the back, it's sort of like that red head thing. See that sort of like weird unicorn? It almost looks like a really evil unicorn. It's like got red fur with a unicorn horn. That's part number one. That's the part that uses Grand Cross. Grand Cross is the only danger left in this battle. The problem is just rolling something really unlucky out of Grand Cross. The other part, and notice that Ferris is just about out of magic points, so I'm going to have to use an elixir on her. The other part is part number three. That's the sort of head at the top, at the sort of the northeast corner of this boss. That part just uses physical attacks. That part's not dangerous at all. With armor status and the mages in the back row, that's not very dangerous at all. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to knock the part number three, the head part of the boss, we're going to try to knock that down to as low health as possible. You see me pausing here, that's because I'm uh, actually writing down how much damage I'm doing to the boss on a calculator just to keep track of it. Part number three, the head has 50,000 health and I want to drop that down to as close to zero as possible without actually killing it. Why do I want to drop it low without killing it? Well, when you leave just one part of Neo X Death alive, he changes over to a new AI routine that has a lot of Meteos in the command prompts, and you don't want that. You don't want him casting Meteo, obviously. That's bad. <laughs> don't want the boss casting Meteo at you. So I want to take this boss as close to zero health as possible, but without actually killing it. So I'm actually tracking the boss's health here. 
and uh, I'm getting roughly three, uh, seven, about what, about 7,000, about 7,500 damage each time Lena and Bart's go combined. But I want to make sure I don't kill this this part, and that's why you're seeing the pause commands there. Only takes about two seconds. I just punch the numbers into the calculator I have sitting here right next to me, and it lets me track how much health the boss has. Right here, I noticed that Lena was not actually at full health, so I'm just going to heal her back up to full, and then get everybody back up to full. So, at this point, the battle is mostly over. At this point, the battle is just hoping that nothing bad comes out from Grand Cross. That's actually what happened on my previous playthrough when I was doing this on stream. I ended up getting a terrible roll from Grand Cross, so let me talk a little bit more about that ability. As I said, Grand Cross causes status ailments to hit your party. It is uh, any one of 18 different status ailments. It is literally a straight 1d18 dice roll in the code. And this ranges over pretty much every single status ailment that you can get in the game. You can get totally non-entity ones, like getting poisoned, which does like nothing whatsoever. You can also get hit by instant death attacks, you can get hit by things like Condemn, you can get turned into a zombie, you can get paralyzed, you can get uh, hit by old status, it's just about anything you can think of. Out of those 18 status ailments, I'd say about 12 of them are pretty benign. Roughly, uh, roughly two-thirds of them won't really do anything, and about Four or five of them are extremely deadly and can end up being a party wipe. And that's basically what happened on my last playthrough of this boss. I had a uh, Grand Cross roll that was, it was instant death for Bart's, it was stone status getting petrified on Lena, it was Kara getting petrified as well, and then Ferris was berserked, and that meant that I couldn't control her actions. When you're berserked, you just attack endlessly over and over and over again. Here, I'm waiting for the Grand Cross. I know that Grand Cross is about to hit, so I'm waiting for Grand Cross, and I'll just toss out Cure 2s to make sure everybody's at full health. But I know that Grand Cross is about to hit the party, so I'm waiting for Grand Cross to hit, and then I can take appropriate healing actions. It's just crossing my fingers and hoping nothing too bad will happen. So here's the great big dice roll, the second Grand Cross. What's going to come out of the Grand Cross this time? Please don't kill off my entire party here. And what do we have? Okay, not too bad. Okay, we got two instant deaths. Ferris was dropped down to near death status. So this was pretty bad, but Lena didn't get touched, fortunately. So thank goodness for that. I'm going to once again use... Uh, double casting on life to bring both Kara and Bart's back to life and I'm gonna elixir Ferris because I don't want her to die and frankly I've got plenty of elixirs this is the last battle so there's no reason not to waste them right here uh, might as well use them and get some good value out of it and then dispel will knock out armor status so everybody other than uh, Ferris needs armor status back again and I need to restore that thank goodness for the running shoes accessory that keeps everyone in haste status permanently and that's really really important in this battle if I did not have permanent haste status, this battle would be pretty much impossible. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use double cure 2 to bring uh, Kara back into the safety zone. And meanwhile, now Bart's and Lena can go back over to the offense again. They're just kind of slowly plinking away at the health of these enemies. The Grand Crossing part, part number 1, has 55,000 health, and we are just going to try to keep hitting this part until it dies. I want as few Grand Crosses as possible. Now, why? Well, I almost cast armor on uh, one of the parts of the boss there, which would have been pretty hilarious, but nope, just getting armor status back on Lena, back on Bart's again, and I will need one more armor status back on Kara. So we'll do that right here, back on Kara, and then let's get a cure 2 on Bart's. So we're restoring everybody back to full health again. Why did I choose to damage part number 3 first? Well, part number 3 never changes its AI routine, it just attacks physically nonstop. Part number one, the Grand Crossing part, that one will do Grand Cross more often when it gets low on health. So the way to do this battle is to take part number three, the physical attacking part, drop that one down to near death status first, and take part number one, the Grand Crossing part, kill that one off second, drop that one down to low health uh, second, and then try to finish them both off at the same time. Try to kill them uh, basically at the same time. And this will make sure everybody's back at full health again. Actually, I think everyone was already at full health, but I wasn't 100% certain. So this will just make certain everybody's back up to full. Anyway, again, the big danger in this battle was the low health on this party. I mean, uh, the Red Mages only have 1,200 health, and that is just, like, ridiculously low for the final battle in this game. You saw that they literally cannot survive a casting of Almagest, and Bart's actually can't survive a casting of Almagest either. I just have to do like this ridiculous song and dance to keep everyone alive in this battle. 
since Lena is the only one who can survive a casting of Almagast if we just do this naturally, but thank goodness for the Wonder Rod and giving me shell status, allowing a second character to survive that Almagast, which now fortunately is out of the way. Once everybody's fully healed up, we've got armor status, the Red Mages can go on the offensive. They do very low damage, but double casting Fire 2 is about the best they can do. The damage is pretty sad, but it's better than nothing. The only other thing I could do is I could move them into the front row and have them use physical attack, but honestly, double casting Fire 2 does just as much damage, and it's a lot safer for them to be in the back row with their pathetically low health totals. <laughs> their health is just so, so very sad. Uh, just to give you an example, a normal party setup would probably have each character having roughly 2,000 health here. That's pretty average. And the elixir is again for magic point refill. Uh, what was nice is I, it, it, the boss even attacked the one I was using the elixir on. As far as why I'm casting Fire 3, there's no particular reason. It just deals the most damage. I could be casting uh, Ice 3, I could be casting Bolt 3. It doesn't matter which one I use. They all do the same amount of damage. The only reason to use Fire 3 is it's the first one listed in the command list. So, first one, and might as well use it. And I think I cast Cure 2 here. I, I think this is a wasted Cure 2. Everybody's actually at full health. But Grand Cross is about to hit, and I just want to double check to make certain that everyone's at full health. Which they are already. And here, what I'm going to do is another little trick. I'm going to have Lena pick up the, the, uh, the, what is it, the Aegis Shield here. This will protect her from any petrification on the next Grand Cross. And that will cut her damage in half. It means she gives up Double Grip, which is the signature Knight ability. So her damage gets cut in half, but it will protect her from some of these status ailments that can come out of the Grand Cross. It's what I intended to do on the first Grand Cross, but I forgot to do it on the earlier Grand Crosses. I also made a mistake with Bartz. I actually, he, he's using a helmet called the Gold Pin Helmet that cuts his magic point you consumption in half. He actually should be using a different helmet that would increase his damage a little bit more. I don't need to save magic points in this battle. Anyway, the last Grand Cross, this is the last chance to lose the battle, and what does it do? Not too much. Bartz is... what happened to Bartz? I'm not exactly sure. Oh, he's been poisoned. I've got poison status and darkness, that's a total non-entity, so we're, we good. I'll just cure Bartz's poison. Use a cure too. That was a very benign Grand Cross. That one didn't do much of anything. So now we can drop the Aegis Shield. I don't need it anymore. Just going to take it off. Have Lena attack physically. Bart's poison status is cured. I'm going to use the eye drop on Varus just because. Why not? <laughs> She's not going to attack physically, but why not? There's another Fire 3. And now the boss is getting very, very low on health. As I said, that Grand Cross was the last chance for the boss to win this fight. Once that Grand Cross whiffed, then we're going to be in perfect st uh, perfect status to take out this boss. So I'll heal Kara. She'll go back to full health. One more Fire 2, just for, you know, for laughs and giggles here. And Lena will attack. And that is going to take this boss even lower. Another Fire 3. I know I'm getting low right here. Fire 2. Double casted Fire 2 for the extra damage. Right now, it's just a matter of piling on as much damage as possible to try and finish off this boss before anything else too crazy happens, before we get around to another Grand Cross again. Kara can go ahead and heal that. We've got another Grand Cross upcoming. See how it says the laws of physics are broken? That's your signal that another Grand Cross is coming. And this boss will do Grand Cross more often when it gets low on health. So I'm just going to, once again, make sure hit points are uh, at very high level. Probably don't need to do this, but better safe than sorry. Just keep everybody up at full didn't really need to cast that on everyone. So Lena's going to attack, and right there, we're going to kill the boss. And here, I realize that now the last part is the only one left. If I've done this right, that will kill the boss. And yes, it does. That's why I tracked the HP earlier. So the boss went perfectly at the end. That's exactly how you want to finish off that boss. The two parts are killed off at exactly the same time. You avoid that AI script that has all the medios in the command prompt. And there you go, that is a victory for the 4 job PS to set up with 5 game overs total on the game as Neo X Death burns away. So let me just give you a few final words here. This video is about to cut off. It's a, As I said, the last battle was pretty long anyway. I uh, really would like to thank people who watched on stream. We had a, great, a lot of great commentary going on while the stream was running, and I appreciated getting a chance to interact with people quite a bit. If you enjoy watching the live stream, as I said, all of the recordings for the Final Fantasy V 4 Job Fiesta are saved on my live stream. They will also be linked by my on my website. I will set that up over the weekend, so if you'd like to watch the recordings, if you want to see the game play out, 
then feel free to watch that. I I actually did this earlier on OWN TV, but all my recordings got lost when OWN TV went out of business about a year ago. So now I do have a full Final Fantasy V run if you want to watch that. It's up on the Twitch TV live stream, and you can go ahead and watch that. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing this, and we might do it again at some other point. By the way, look at how this is getting glitched out here. A little bit weird. Uh, something not quite right in the emulation. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care. Have a great weekend.